Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, excited about uh, how the guys played last Saturday. I thought we played a complete game. I thought it was really impressed that we uh, started really fast, got up uh, 14 to three. I thought the touchdown before half to get us up 21 to three um, uh, was really good. I thought our guys played fast. They, they ran to the football. They were physical. Um, we were definitely ready to play the game and um, Kansas did some good things against us that challenged us. And then uh, starting off the second half with a big touchdown run by Deuce was was big for us. Um, get up 28 to three and uh, got a chance to play an awful lot of guys. Everybody that went on the trip, I think, pretty much got in the game or pretty close to that and came out of the game healthy, which is another real positive. And um, had our first practice yesterday for West Virginia. Everybody was out there at practice, which has been the first time We've had everybody practice on a Monday in quite a while. So that was that was a really good sign and have to have a great week of preparation because this is a really good football team we're playing. Um, they're really sound on on defense They're very physical, very fast, and they've got a bunch of veteran guys on offense. So it'll be a big challenge for us. When you first talked to Cedar Ridge High School coach Sam Robinson about Deuce, what were some of the things that he mentioned to you? Well, I know a bunch of people, a bunch of our coaches probably had a chance to visit with him. I didn't get to that that high school, um, but I just uh, you could see a kid on film that uh, loved to play the game. You could see a guy that did everything right uh, on and off the field. You could see a, a young man that uh, um, was a competitor, and uh, that's the thing that so impressed us right away was. Uh, how he played the game. And then when you got on the phone with him and then they finally, he and his mother came up, I think for the first two that came up on the visit and uh, you could just see a, uh, an energy uh, in the young man and, and uh, how his personality could be contagious with people. Uh, and it has been ever since he arrived on campus. Uh, he's always got a smile on his face. He always practices hard. He always challenges uh, his teammates to be better. And um, it's been a lot of fun to coach him the last two years. He's obviously on the verge of accomplishing some some rare feats this season that really hadn't been accomplished very many times in the last 10 years. Could you foresee this time happening for him in his sophomore season? Yeah, I really could, especially after watching him his first uh, fall camp here that he just was – he had that, that it factor, had that special ability. And then um, the more you got the ball in his hands, the more – uh, he was uh, around our system and understood more and more of how he fit within the framework of our offense. The more we were able to utilize him, the more confidence I think that uh, he had as well. Um, and so nothing that, that um, Deuce Vaughn does surprises me and probably should surprise anybody that's, that's around the kid as much as we are on a daily basis, because um, he just checks every box and, and it's fun to, to be around him. And it's fun for, to have our young players, even though Deuce is young, to see what hard work does and, and what preparation uh, does and what taking care of your body does to, to lead to have success. You answer my third question. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Chris, maybe a hard uh, question to put your finger on, but what is it about West Virginia that's been a difficult matchup for Kansas State over the past few years? You know, um, Physical play for starters. I thought they last year they won the line of scrimmage uh, against us on both sides. Um, well coached. Uh, tremendous amount of respect for for Neil. Uh, guys are always ready to play. They they're in the right spot. They uh, they make plays, um, and it's in all phases: offense, defense, and special teams. And that's what I think makes it uh, uh, such a challenge for us. Is uh, we have to be on our A game in all three phases. And and if, and if we're not, um, we're going to have a long afternoon. And so I know our guys are excited about the challenge. And um, we have to have a great week of preparation because we've got to play our best. Did you use their win streak at all as motivation this week? No, I, I, I try not to do that. No matter what the game is, whether you've won a bunch of them in a row or not won, I, I don't, I've just never been a fan of that, even to last week. Uh, when we had won a bunch of in a row against against KU, it's more of it's it's the 2021 team against their 2021 team, and it's different people in different spots, and um, the dynamic of each team is a little bit different. And um, you know, it's just it's this year's version against theirs their version, and uh, it's going to be a big challenge for us.
And I also want to ask about Skyler. Is there anything you've seen? Um, I and mean, we see what he does on the field, but is there anything you've seen from him preparation wise during the week that's really helped him? During well, this yeah, he's always been a guy that's that's prepared exceptionally well, watched film, um, asked a lot of questions, took notes, visited with wideouts, tight ends, running backs, brings those guys together on his own with the quarterbacks. So they watch extra film uh, in the evenings. Um, whether it be practice or game film, to just get on the same page. I, the communication that, that I witness in practice, even yesterday, just doing some seven-on-seven seven, uh, on a Monday, the communication he has with with uh, um, his guys uh, at wide receiver and tight end is is on point, and uh, everybody seems to be in sync. And uh, that's when you're clicking is when everybody's on the same page, and, and he's done a great job of fostering those relationships by – uh, meeting with with those guys all the time. West Virginia has been a little inconsistent this year. What do you see from them when they're playing their good football? What do they do well? Well, um, you know, you watch them against Oklahoma, and uh, I really thought they won the line of scrimmage against Oklahoma. I thought that they were very disciplined. They didn't miss any tackles, and against Oklahoma, that's the key because the ball is going to be out in space, and they didn't miss any tackles. Um, you know, I watched him against TCU um, eliminate big plays and find big plays of their own. Uh, and, uh, you know, some of it's matchups, too. Um, and uh, uh, they have tremendous skill at the at wide receiver and, and, and running back and, and an experienced quarterback. So they're, you can't just say we're going to try to shut down. Um, the run game or try to uh, eliminate somebody out of the out of the wide receiver group because they have so many people that can beat you. And then on defense, they've got a bunch of veteran guys that played a lot of football and they know where they fit and they uh, they do a good job running the ball. Defensively for you guys, it looks like you've kind of stripped back the defense a little bit, got back to your basics, so yep. to speak. Is it hard to balance that between being simple for the guys to understand and being too simple for the offense? Yeah, there is a, a good balance in that. Um, but what we feel is our guys play faster when we strip it back. And we'd like to keep adding things. Um, and we did a little bit against KU um, based on some personnel groups and some and some formations. But when, when our guys are playing slow, we're not a very good defense. And so we have to go back to what, what our kids know, and what our guys can execute at, at, at a high level. And when you see guys like Daniel Green um, and even Austin Moore last week, you know, a couple of linebackers playing as fast as they are, uh, it makes it easier on the secondary because they can clean up some of the plays uh, because those backers are playing fast. And we're playing so many guys up front, as we all know. So that that's keeping guys fresh and uh, I still think it's better for us uh, that less is is better right now. And on special teams, Kansas did a nice job of kind of taking your return game out. Are you afraid you're going to see a lot more of that in the future? Um, they did. We had a couple nice returns. Philip did a couple of, had a couple of really nice plays. Um, but uh, whether it was Pooch kicking it on on kick returns, there was a little bit of a win that made sense to me. Uh, and then uh, doing the same thing, kind of angling some punts. Um, you know, trying not to give us the explosive play. Um, and, and we have to find ways to continue to find a, to manufacture some returns because we need to be able to flip a field. And we were able to flip uh, one. We had one explosive return. We need to be able to flip a field so that we can get a 50-yard field because the one, the, the, the negative about the Kansas win for us as a coaching staff is we didn't create a turnover that would have gotten us a short field. And so we've got to continue to emphasize that so we can get a short field by creating a strip, uh, an interception. And if we can't, we've got to be able to do it on teams. Will Howard went into the game. He just didn't turn around and hand it off. Was it important to get him some real passing reps? You bet. Uh, it was a big emphasis for us to get him running and to get him throwing. And I thought Will looked fresh. I thought he looked really com comfortable. He looked confident. Uh, we had a couple of plays called back, but it still it was fun to see him, um, you know, go a uh, quarterback run game and, and a guy's unblocked and he, he runs through an arm tackle. He threw a couple of strikes. Uh, that's uh, it's fun to watch. And we talked about it yesterday and he felt comfortable. He felt confident. It was fun for him to get back out there. And I know his body feels pretty good compared to last year. Already was that, I assume that means Julie Sprints is okay. Yep. He practiced yesterday. In this era with the new rules and stuff, it's kind of switching gears a little bit. 
how tough is it to roster manage and identify what your recruiting needs are throughout the year? Yeah, it's really hard. Um, you know, the NCAA granting some initial counters will, will help us, but you still don't know because, you know, we're going to have an awful lot of guys go through senior day next week and then they have to make decisions. We have to make decisions. How many of those guys are coming back? And it's just, um, there's not a right time to, to talk about that. We talk about it internally, but um, there's some guys that have said, Hey, I'm, I'm in their own mind saying, this is my last go round and I'm ready to roll. And there's other guys that are still comp contemplating coming back for that extra COVID year. But that's, we've talked about this before. That's going to be, you know, for the foreseeable future, we're going to have this kind of conversation every December. And, uh, um, so it is, it, the recruiting is, is really difficult because you just, the roster management, you got to keep it at 85. Um, and that's going to be, there's going to be some difficult choices for guys. How would you summarize Daniel Green's growth and his progress throughout the season? I think he's playing at an all conference level. I, I really do. Um, excited for him. His first year is a true full-time starter. He has played a lot in our previous two years, but, uh, this year being a full-time starter and being the guy, um, we put an awful lot on his plate as far as making some some adjustments and some calls and some line stunts. And um, he feels more and more confident each week. I know he's playing with a lot of confidence. I think it helps him having a guy like Cody with him. That's uh, uh, another really good super senior that um, between the two of them, they've played a lot of ball and they've played a lot of ball together. And so it's, it's, it's a comfort level for Coach Standard to have those two guys out there. But I think Daniel's playing at a really high level. You mentioned West Virginia's defense. Uh, Oklahoma State had some short fields against them. Are there a player or two that jumps out at you for the Mountaineers? Uh, there's a bunch of them. You know, their, their defensive front uh, is uh, dominating, and they really rush the passer well. There's a number of guys there. I'd leave somebody out. And so – I won't get any names, but there's a bunch of guys that rush the passer. And I think they really do a nice job in the back seven of tackling and running through leverage and not giving you much after contact. And, um, you, you know, Oklahoma State's doing that to a lot of teams right now. And uh, th they're playing really well on defense. And, and you know, I saw it last week with, with KU and saw it this week with West Virginia. Um, that, that defense is, is playing as good as there is in the country probably. Do you think Skylar Thompson is playing at an all-conference level right I now? I do. You know, I, I think he is. I think I think Deuce Vaughn is. There's just a lot of good quarterbacks and a lot of good running backs, and so you control what you can control. And uh, you know, the 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 numbers that Skylar's putting up is really fun to see. And for us to put the game in his hands a lot more this year and feel comfortable that you know what, pocket breaks down and, and he's going to scramble out direct traffic and send Malik, who was running an outbreaking cut, uh, vertical and, and throw a big touchdown was huge. For him to step aside of a, of a pressure and throw a strike to Cade Warner, for him to do some things on third down and know that, okay, can I, can I throw it here to Landry for a first down or I'm going to take a shot? And he's smart enough to say, no, we're going to keep moving the chains. I mean, I think the game has slowed down for him so much. He's so comfortable with uh, the system we have, he's comfortable with the play calls. He's comfortable in changing things. Uh, and, and without without a doubt, he's having an all-conference type season. All that being said, none of that is under his control or our control. I just know that um, for him going into his last year and coming back uh, with the injury that he had, to think where we're at now with him compared to where we were, you know, whatever the second quarter of the Southern Illinois game. Uh, I, I know he's, I, I hope he's pleased with where he's at. And uh, I know we are. Looking at the two deep and on the roster, I noticed Tayton Winkle is not on the roster anymore. Is he not with the team? Yeah. Tayton uh, decided to hang it up. Um, he had an injury and uh, didn't know if he could come back from that. And, um, and so decided to step aside, focus on his academics, tremendous amount of respect for Tayton um, and uh, wish him nothing but the best. It wasn't a, a, something where he got in trouble or we asked him not to come back or he didn't, it's just, he had an injury and didn't think he was going to be healthy enough to finish it out and wants to get his degree and tremendous amount of respect for Tayton. In two weeks in a row, Skyler's taking a lay hit it out of bounds. The first time there was a big scrum, a player gets ejected. This time around, it wasn't like that. Nobody was ejected, no punches. Was there ever a discussion with the team about keeping composure, even though 
your QB is taking a yeah, hit like and, that. and that's hard to do with a bunch of guys that are going to protect their quarterback. And and um, our guys did a good. We talked about it before the game. We talked about it all week that this could get to be a chippy situation. Uh, and uh, lo and behold, it happened, and it happened on our sideline, which is always worrisome on our sideline. But credit uh, True Carroll and the strength and conditioning staff because um, they were right there. They made sure nothing was going to happen. Um, and uh, proud of our guys to, to stay away from that and not get to any personal fouls run sportsman like and um, Skyler's good he's all right and um, you know it, it's yeah it was it wasn't a good situation but uh, I came out of it okay you talked um, you talked about simplifying the defense also I think you mentioned yesterday on the big 12 calls and position changes yeah was that more just I know Reggie Stubblefield was uh, started last game as a, are you going more with six defensive backs or is he? Kind yeah, of there's a, it, some of it's based on personnel. Some of it, um, you know, we, uh, we moved J Mac. We're, we're, we're learning this defense, just like uh, you guys know, we're learning this defense because we're making some mistakes uh, within the defense. And I knew that was going to happen this year um, as we continue to evaluate our talent and evaluate where we're going to put people on the field, as well as where does, sincere Mason fit in where does Ross Elder fit in and um, we made the move a couple of weeks ago to put uh, uh, or last week to put J Mac uh, as the middle safety and um, uh, give him a, an opportunity to get closer to the action and that was a, a, a good move for us um, and uh, TJ's still a part of that mix um, but J Mac's a, a six-year guy that um, provides a, a bunch of, of experience in there of playing the game. And then I think it suited Ross and sincere better to be on the uh, boundary safety and they're playing and splitting time. And then between Reggie and uh, Henny and Wayne Jones, I think all three are really good football players. And some of it is, is based on the down and distance. And some of it is based on what personnel the offense has. Uh, but all three of those guys are really capable players. Uh, and then every other position, as you guys know, it's just mass line changes of D linemen and corners and linebackers to get more and more guys on the field. Chris, you referenced, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the West Virginia defense and the guys up front, but is Stills one of the premier disruptors, not just in the conference, but in D1. Yeah, and he's been that way for, for a while. I know his brother was there too, but he's he is a, a difference maker, can rush the passer, can uh, always going to you know, draw a double team on run game. And, and they move him around. You know, he's not just playing inside. He's playing some outside. They're, they're doing a lot of different things with him, and they're, they're finding different ways to get a four-man rush. Um, with some different combinations of four down to three down and rushing a linebacker, rushing a uh, kind of a, a hybrid position as well. And um, th that's what makes them difficult is they're just not lining up and, and you know where everybody's at. And so um, it helps to have an experienced quarterback, an experienced offensive line to try to, you know, make sure that we're getting in the right calls based on whether whether it's the front or the pressure that we see. Chris, I know it probably seems like we ask you this every week about like the opposing running back in the Big 12, but but what is it about Letty Brown that makes him so good? Physicality. Um, boy, he runs with a purpose, runs with an attitude. Um, fun watching him run because uh, um, he doesn't take the punishment, he delivers the punishment. And uh, I'm super impressed with him, have been for a while. Um, and um, he's, a, he's a terrific football player and uh, when the, you know they he can catch the ball out of the backfield they, you know they when they go to their empty they keep him in the game and he becomes kind of a wide receiver they run some screens to him obviously he's great with just you know handing the ball off to him but he's a complete player and then kind of a two-part question is that Felix mentioned after the game that KU threw double and sometimes even triple teams at him and he expects that's basically going to be the case going forward for the rest of this year uh first how much does a player's mindset have to change when you go from the double team or from a single one-on-one -on -one to like double or triple team? And then does technique have to change at all? Well, you got to be patient for starters. You got to play within the framework of the defense. I thought they did a good job of chipping him all the time on third downs. They even chipped Nate a couple of times on third down and, and Nate got his hand on a ball and made, made a good play. And um, yeah, I think when you have a, a disruptive pass rusher, you know, like, like we've had here for, an awful long time 
the ball probably comes out a little bit quicker and um, yeah, you're either going to get doubled or you're going to get chipped and, and uh, you just got to keep playing within the framework of the defense. And when you have an opportunity to get that one-on-one, -on -one, you need to be able to win. I was going to ask about the receiving core, uh, a couple of young guys getting some time, like with Jalen Travis comes to mind and, and RJ, do you see them continuing to have expanded roles moving forward? Yeah, I do. Uh, last week we were banged up with Philip and Malik and uh, Philip didn't play very much, which was, which was a good thing because he's healthy this week now. So that gave both RJ and, and Jalen an opportunity to get more reps in practice, gain more confidence. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we relied more on guys like Cade and Cade had a really good game, made a couple of big time plays for us. Uh, Keenan Garber's continuing to improve, had a couple of really nice catches, had a couple of really good blocks. The game's slowing down for Keenan. We, we have so many wide receivers right now. Uh, and everybody knows about, you know, Malik and Phillip and, and, and Landry uh, that are making the lion's share of the catches. But there's so many other guys that uh, maybe are catching a ball or two, but getting a bunch of reps that uh, I think make that position a strength for us. We have a lot of depth there. We can play an awful lot of guys. Yeah, those elements of your secondary falling together to uh, help you play efficiently at a high level. They have. We're continuing to improve. Um, we busted a couple of coverages, and it was a lack of communication, not not necessarily a technique error, but a communication error that um, we're always trying to shore up because that's the thing with, with secondary play. Um, you know, you, you can play really well, but you have one bad play, and everybody knows that that's the bad play. Uh, and we are, those guys are playing more and more together. Um, I look at guys like Russ Yeast and, and Sincere that are new to our program, Julius new to our program, Reggie new to our program that are getting more and more comfortable and confident with each other out on the field. Um, playing an awful lot of guys probably um, makes the communication even more and more difficult because there's, there's just so many. It's not like this guy only plays with this guy. They all have to be interchangeable. Um, but we're playing better in, in the secondary. We're going to be challenged uh, this week for sure with a bunch of really good wide receivers. And uh, so it's something that we're always emphasizing. You mentioned uh, in your post-game comments about being bowl eligible. How big is that for the program? And is that something you you kind of now, now drop and and move on to the next well yeah we absolutely need to move on um, but i'm happy for uh those seniors that um, came back or the seniors that are deciding what they're going to do that they know that um on their last go around they're going to get a chance to play postseason football i think that's really important uh to those guys uh, in the same respect um, i think we can still have a really special season and um if we continue to keep trending in that direction of playing with more confidence uh preparing every week like we have the last three weeks um, believing that we're getting better and better and um you know cutting it loose and playing with great technique and playing physical those things i i think we can have a really special season but it you know it 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 starts today with practice and continues on so that we give ourselves a great chance to be successful uh, each and every Saturday. But uh, um, no question, I'm, I, I'm happy about, especially after starting 0-3 in conference play, I, the schedule is the schedule. You know, we started with really tough games and um, we, we've won three tough games. And, and so the schedule is the schedule. You still have to beat people to get to that number to, to be able to play postseason football. And, um, it didn't look good here for a little while and, um, credit to our seniors, credit to our leadership to, to say, you know what, we, we've got to take more ownership in this. We got to hold each other more accountable so that we can be prepared and, and ready to play every Saturday. And we've been able to do that the last three weeks. Is that kind of a box you can check off the rest of the Absolutely. Season? You bet. I ain't got time for two if you can answer. <laughs> okay. So going back to Tayton real quick, I guess how, I mean, not that you're happy about that situation, but how thankful are you that at least Chris has gotten in these last two games and kicked. So you're not going into game 10 with no one on the roster to kick a field goal, any live game. Yeah. Um, and, and Chris has continued to take half of the reps all season long because we always thought it was an ongoing battle. 
Uh, but now it just brings Ty back to the forefront of he may be an option on, on, on game day. He kicks now. Um, and we just had taken that off his plate. He was just kicking off and punting. Now he becomes a field goal kicker as well. And so you've got another, you know, a senior that's a reliable guy that that um, the moment won't get to him. So uh, he just takes more of those reps. And then to follow up on what you asked about Daniel earlier, I mean, he's leading you in tackles. He's second in tackles for loss to, to, to Felix. How much more impressive does it make it when you think that he's missed four full quarters yeah. of football because of the, the unfortunate targeting stuff? Yeah, it, uh, and he's not let, let that bother him at all. Um, he's, you know, just continued to, to move forward. And I think he does a great job of preparation and, and seeing plays throughout the week, watching film. And, you know, the, the play he made on the quarterback uh, to stop a drive, they were third and third and two or something. I thought they were in four down territory and, and he ran through and, and hit the kid for a three yard loss. Uh, that's something that we had worked in practice and he shot out of a can and he knew the play and went and, and blew it up. And he's just playing at a really confident level. And that's, that's fun to watch him because he's a special player. All right. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Have a great week.